Good morning. If there was ever a morning to not wake up, this is the morning. I wanted to sleep forever. Forever and ever. But that's not possible. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay, it's been a week. Today is Saturday the 9th. And we're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. And these all, the ancient saints, have obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Hebrews 11, 39 through 40. Salvation is a family affair. Elijah came to the Kirtland Temple in April 1836 to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest the Lord come and smite the earth with a curse. It was revealed through Joseph Smith that the earth will be smitten with a curse unless there is a welding link of some kind or other between the fathers and the children. For me without them cannot be made perfect, neither can they without us be made perfect. The prophet further taught that it is necessary that the sealing power should be in our hands to seal our children and our dead for the fullness of the dispensation of times. The holy temple becomes the eternal link between past and present, between the living and the dead. I have no thoughts on that. Um, today is Revelation chapter 4, and this is when we get into very image, imagery related things. He sees, um, a celestial earth, the throne of God, and all created things worshiping the Lord. He sees um, a throne, and he sees 24 elders with crowns, and he sees uh, different things. He sees a beast. Uh, the first beast was like a lion, the second like a calf, the third had the face of a man, the fourth beast was like a flying eagle, um, and all these things worship uh, Christ. Now... It was hard to choose a verse for a personal statement in here because it's not talking about doctrine or anything. It's talking about what he's seen, about what is to come or what he, you know, is being shown. So it was really hard to pick a personal verse. Um, I chose verses 9 through 11. When the beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. Um, the four and twenty elders fall down before him on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So I chose this because really it's one of the only things I could kind of relate to is um I can only imagine that these four and twenty elders are apostles, prophets, you know, important people in the kingdom of God. And they're wearing crowns and they fall down before Christ, throw their crowns at his feet and worship him. I need to worship him. I need to cast my crown, so to speak, before him. Uh my pride, my glory, my worldly achievements, whatever those may be, my, you know, whatever I think is worthy and, you know, whatever thing I'm crowned with glory or whatever, cast that before Christ and worship him only because it is for his pleasure that all things are and were created. Well, in this sense, I'm speaking Heavenly Father and Christ together. Uh, anyways, that was my, that was my statement. So let's get into the verse by verse. Oh, okay. The 
second part of the book of Revelation, chapters 4 through 22, records John's apocalyptic vision of the history of the earth. Chapters 4 and 5 stand as an introduction to the scenes of earth's future and ultimate destiny. Okay. Uh, now begins the apocalyptic revelation, which continues to the end of the book. The four and twenty elders, these are twenty-four deceased faithful elders from the seven churches. White raiment and crowns of gold represent their exalted condition, celestial glory. Then for verse six, the sea of glass is a sanctified earth. Beasts full of eyes before and behind see doctrine and covenants, 77 verses 2 through 3. In the writings of the other prophets, beasts are usually types representing such things as kingdoms. But here in chapter 4, the beasts are beasts, that is, celestial animals. And that is all for chapter 4. Okay, thank you for that. <laughs> really cleared up a lot of things, didn't it? Anyways, that's kind of what I'm expecting from the pro revelation is kind of this imagery stuff that doesn't have a lot of doctrinal application, but like we said at the beginning, we're supposed to try to find Christ in it. I think I found him today and uh, we will see you again tomorrow. I'll leave you with a prayer from a diary of prayer. And if possible, I will go back to sleep. I doubt it because the boys want me to get up. This one is from Eric Milner White. O Lord, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, who wast with us in our birth, be with us through our life. Thou who art with us through our life, be with us at our death. And because thy mercy will not leave us then, grant that we die not but rise to the life everlasting with thee and in thee, who livest and reignest in the glory of the eternal trinity, one God, world without end. Okay. That was Revelation chapter 4, and tomorrow we do chapter 5. We will see you then. Bye.